Hello, groupies. Welcome to PIAC Minnesota Paranormal. Happy Monday. Oh, what is it? July 19th? Oof, 2021? Oof. It's been a really busy weekend, you know, so. <clears throat> kind of losing, you know, a little track of time now. Anyway, I uh, welcome. And the last couple of episodes that I tossed your way were... Uh, involving the paranormal investigations that we do, because we do haunting investigations. That's one of the many services that PIAC Minnesota Paranormal provides and offers. And I will leave a link in the description section for you if you're interested in any of our services or if you want to know a little bit more about us and our history. The last couple of episodes, the first one was a kind of unpacking an investigation from start to finish. You know what, uh, how an investigation unfolds, how we get contacted and, and so on. And the second one was uh, just a little quick rundown of the equipment that we use. And yeah, as I said in the other one, I'm not a film producer. I'm an investigator and I also work for the government. That's my ball and chain job. Yeah. Anyway, uh, always looking for room for improvement. And, you know, if anybody out there knows anything about that YouTube studio, because I can't figure that out to save my ass. Really. <sighs> so much for a three-digit IQ, right? Anyway. So the single most important part of a paranormal investigation is the team. And our team consists of seven souls. And... I am the, it's my team. I'm the ringleader and I'm a psychic medium, which I've been my whole life and a spirit channeler. I, I channel entities and I bring to the table the, you know, the leadership role, the bulk of the responsibilities, uh, interviewing, uh, clients, doing readings, channelings, etc. And this is the second team that I've had. I had another team in 2003 in Michigan, and it was fantastic. We had a documentarian that followed us around, and uh, we had some a radio remote at a really infamous uh, inn that was there in Michigan. And, of course, we had a, a magazine and newspaper interviews, and it was just really, really, really golden age for us. It was wonderful. And uh, here in the great state of Minnesota, my home, when I decided it was time to come home, uh, we developed this team over time. It's a little slower to come together, but it, it's come together nonetheless. So we have me. My name is Juliana. I'm resident medium and ringleader of this mess. And next in line is my beloved soulmate, Douglas. And Douglas has a unique ability that he brings. You, Douglas is... Uh, he is a spirit box specialist and... He really, he really makes that sing. He knows what's what, and he can pick out those sounds, and it's really fantastic. Because technology, you know, you can't just grab a camera and assume you're going to know what you're doing. Obviously, you see here um, that I'm ever-evolving and trying really hard to do my best with these episodes, and they'll get better as I go along. But... Uh, Douglas seems to just have a knack for the spirit box. And the spirit box is a box that is used. It makes high-pitched squeaking sounds. But it sounds like a radio that's continuously tuning itself. And then you'll hear little words and statements come out that, that let you know that the spirits are listening or they're responding to your questions. And he is also our resident debunker. One of the most important tools that you can bring to a paranormal investigation is logic and rationale. Because the first thing you have to do is debunk. You have to determine if what is going on is, you know, a leaky pipe, a squeaky door, a banging window, a kid playing a prank, a mouse in the ceiling. You have to rule out the obvious, the physical, the mechanical, uh, issues within a structure, an apartment, a condo, a house, whatever. You have to rule those out first. And then anything that can't be explained by science or logic or, you know, any other reasonable means is, you know, defined as paranormal. So Douglas, because Douglas can fix anything and everything in the entire freaking world, and I'm not kidding you, 
If a rocket landed in our yard and needed to jumpstart, he'd figure it out. He has the brain of an engineer, and he can fix anything, anything in a home, anything in a vehicle, any anything. So he's very, very adept at at listening and understanding. Is that knock in the wall? Is that air in the pipes? Is it a, is it a, you know, is there a creak in the floor? Is it because it's settling? I mean, he, he can figure those structural mechanical things about a, a building. He could figure those out right away. So that's why he's our debunker. So he debunks and uh, operates a spirit box. And next in line is our teammate, Nate. Now, Nate originally started out in 2019 as one of our clients. I got a call late in the evening from him. He and his brother had fled their home in terror and uh, were at a motel when they called me. <laughs> and his brother has since, uh, the, since you know, moved on. Uh, but we, we hit it off and discovered that Nate uh, is an extra special man with really extra special abilities. He is empathic to the nth degree. And we have been on investigations where the spirits are uh, communicating with him rather than communicating in words uh, or, or visuals. With me, it's words, it's visuals, it's smells, it's sounds. Uh, I can feel them too. I can feel their energy. With Nate, uh, he has this extreme empathic ability where the spirits will uh, make him feel or, or he, he can feel what happened at the point of their death or any suffering that they experienced in life that is keeping them here and, and uh, preventing them from moving on. An example being a Civil War soldier that we encountered at an investigation last year where he had been shot uh, in, the, in, in the chest up in here and... Uh, in an effort to communicate that to Nate, um, Nate uh, was standing in a group of people and all of a sudden he, he, he yelled because he had this uh, incredible, sharp, burning pain in his chest and he was thrown back slightly as well. So his abilities do that. Uh, if someone is, you know, they, they suffocated at the end or whatever, they'll, you know, he'll feel that. And uh, he's very touch sensitive to uh, the entities as well. So he brings to the table empathic abilities, which we are greatly appreciative of and highly respectful to. The next in line is uh, two wonderful, wonderful women who wish to remain anonymous, uh, R&B, <laughs> Uh, they work behind the scenes. They are part of the team and we, they are in a consultation advisory role, but R is also our resident Wiccan. So when it comes to pagan issues or, or Wiccan rituals or, or any kind of, um, uh, any kind of uh, work that we're doing that would require a specialist or an expert in the field of the, um, uh, the pagan religions, we seek out her advice. But she doesn't uh, really leave her home. She doesn't attend the investigations, but she works with us behind the scenes. She's incredibly valuable. And the other one is B. And B is, she's an empath, a remote viewer, um, a Reiki master healer. And she, uh, we seek out her advice, her experience, uh, her consultation. She's also our Catholic specialist. So she has many, many, many hats that she wears behind the scenes, but wishes to remain anonymous. And you know, that's perfectly fine. The work that we do isn't taken very seriously. It's usually used for entertainment purposes and they'll have entertainment disclaimers on videos. But honestly, there really is a lot of paranormal going on in the world that science has actually intersected with. And we're learning more and more about uh, interaction and life after death and the different ethereals that uh, share our existence with us. The last two are not exactly human. We have an angel. His name's Hanyal. Appears to us in the form of David Koresh. And he is uh, his... Uh, he wants to be called Steve. And he is an angel, a watcher, who entered our 
universe, our world, at the the literally on the day that the Waco disaster occurred. And he showed me where he was just, it was like, it was like a cellophane over a road, you know, like a wall of cellophane in the middle of a road. And, and he walked through and as he walked through his, his appearance changed and he absorbed the appearance or mirrored the appearance of the main player in that catastrophe that he's, when he stepped across that cellophane, there it was this catastrophe that he walked into. And he absorbed the appearance of the main player, which was David Koresh. Uh, he, uh, he's very, very protective, specifically of Nate. He prefers to hang with Nate. And he helps us in just tremendous ways. We also call on the other archangels, of course, Azrael in particular, uh, Lucifer for light, enlightenment information. And we have a demon. Uh, we have two demons that work with us actually now. We have uh, Poco, who is a binding demon from South America. And he's also found in Jewish lore as well. He's a benevolent demon. Um, pretty much just kind of minds his own business. But we call on him uh, at times when we need a little extra muscle. You know, when you're dealing with an unruly ghost or something. And our newest uh, member is Arvold. And Arvold is a dragoor, actually. He's the spirit of a dra dragoor. And uh, we are uh, opening communication and uh, trying to establish some meaningful relationship with him. I think he will be helpful as well. And it's important to call on the ethereals because if you're dealing with a demonic presence, Having another demon there to give you some muscle and to uh, help pull them out is really important because, you know, we don't all speak angel or demon, you know, we don't all speak poltergeist. So it's always good to have a translator on board. So when we're getting ready, we, uh, the team will get together and we'll do some consultation and make a decision if we're going to take a case or if we feel, you know, we're going to take a case. And we talk about safety issues and different things and what we know so far. And then we go in and we do our, we do our thing. And I think it's important that, uh, you know, when you go into an investigation, you're going into someone's very private life. So you have to have a team that is mature, <clears throat> that is professional, and that will, uh, you know, show up <clears throat> clean and decently dressed. You know, I'm not talking suits and skirts, but, uh, you know, don't show up like you're hung over with sweatpants. Don't look like you're a skateboarder. Uh, nothing against skateboarders. Okay. Uh, but it's appropriate for skateboarding, you know, athletics, but it's not appropriate when you're going into someone's house and you are trying to make an impression and you're trying to help them out. It's, it's not appropriate. So it's very important that you choose people that are taking the work very seriously, but also to understand that it's, it's ridiculously fun and there's a lot of fun to it. And we really enjoy the work. We all have such a passion for it. So you have to have that, that, that spark of passion and, and joy in doing the work. You have to be able to have something meaningful to bring to the team. You can't just run around, you know, with the camera and think you're going to be the next YouTube sensation. It doesn't work that way. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things to unpack. There's a lot of, uh, you know, you're in somebody's private home. That's their most intimate place. You're dealing with people that are scared and confused and probably very embarrassed. So you need to have people that have a level of emotional maturity that can handle that. You need to have a good leadership in place. You need to go in there dressing like human beings that they're going to want in their house. You're not going to go in there looking like gangbangers because they're going to think they're getting robbed. You know, they're not going to go in there. And you have to be polite and professional and, and it's very important. So we strive to always uh, put on our best appearance when we go as well. And uh, if you're thinking of putting a team together, you know, um, don't feel obligated to bring your, your high school buddies with you or your friends, you know, uh, or somebody, cause you don't want them to feel left out. Be sure that they have something 
<clears throat> something valuable and um, meaningful to bring to the team and, and make sure that your energy meshes together too. If you have someone on your team that you really just, you're not clicking with, you can't work with them. They're going to block your energy. They're going to change the energy. Things aren't going to be right. So you want to be sure that you're working with people that you not just trust and are comfortable with, but that your energy flows beautifully with and, uh, supremely with is, and, it's just, it's very, very important. And, you know, uh, in the early 2000s, we had people come and go on our team, people that uh, weren't taking it seriously. Be sure you get somebody who takes it seriously. And uh, people that, you know, they did it for ego. They did it because they thought they were, uh, you know, the greatest psychic in the world and things like that. And, and you leave your ego at the door. You never bring an ego into an investigation because there's really no right or wrong. And everybody has something important to contribute. It isn't about uh, the center of attention being one person over another. It's not about the people. It's about the spirits and the ethereals and the client, ultimately about the client and getting that client's problem under control and, and resolved. So that's our team. And if you visit our site, you know, you'll learn a little bit more about uh, investigations and the the inner workings. And whenever we have the ability to uh, put out recordings or videos of investigations, we certainly will, but we hold the privacy of our clients at the utmost level. We take it the most serious of any part of an investigation. And if they don't want their names out there, if they don't want their home, you know, their property and stuff or their situation to be uh, revealed in a public uh, format such as YouTube, then we're going to respect that. And it's 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 important to uh, you know to understand that you're you're it's not a game. You're not paparazzi. Uh, you're investigating something that's scaring and terrorizing innocent people. So hold it in some kind of reverence and be respectful. So. From me, Juliana, and Douglas, and Nate, and R, and B, and Steve, and Arvold, and Poco, we bid you a farewell for now. May you be filled with the light and love of the universe, and always do good. <laughs>